Ladies and gentlemen, delegates and friends, I come here today to share with you President Obama's strategy for preventing biological weapons proliferation and bioterrorism. The United States intends to implement this strategy through renewed cooperation and more thorough cons consultations with our international counterparts in order to prevent the misuse and abuse of science while working together to strengthen health security around the world. When it comes to the proliferation of bioweapons and the risk of attack, the world community now faces a greater threat based on a new calculus. President Obama fully recognizes that a major biological weapons attack on one of the world's major cities could cause much death, economic and psychological damage, as well as a nuclear attack could. And while the United States remains concerned about state-sponsored biological warfare and proliferation, we are equally, if not more, concerned about an act of bioterrorism due to the increased access to advances in the life sciences. Around the world, we are experiencing an unparalleled period of scientific advancement and innovation in biology. Techniques that once were cutting edge innovations are now commonplace. Capabilities once found only in a few advanced laboratories are increasingly widespread. We all hope that science is used for good, but we cannot ignore that it can also be used for ill. Neither I nor anyone else in the Obama administration need any further evidence of the terrible nature and consequences of a bioterrorism attack. I have unfortunately seen the dangers of bioterrorism up close. I served as a member of Congress when a small amount of anthrax was mailed to the United States Senate in October of 2001, just weeks after the September 11th terrorist attacks. A few envelopes containing anthrax spores paralyzed the Congress. The office buildings of both the House and the Senate were closed down almost immediately. My offices in the Longworth building were closed for eight weeks to be sanitized. Five people who came into contact with spores from the letters were killed, and hundreds were put on antibiotics. Years later, no one has been brought to justice, and it appears that a single person may have perpetrated these attacks. This underscores the fact that significant capabilities for harm are already available to small groups and individuals, and the prospect of bioterrorism represents a growing risk for the global community. Already we have seen terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda seek biological materials and expertise in order to conduct a biological attack. That is why we in the United States are calling for all of you to join us in bolstering the Biological Weapons Convention, the premier forum for dealing with biological threats. The Obama administration's new strategy for countering biological threats, both natural and man-made, rests upon the main principle of the Biological Weapons Convention, that the use of biological weapons is, and I quote, repugnant to the conscience of mankind. That's why we believe we have developed an approach that strikes a balance between supporting scientific progress and curbing and stopping the potential for abuse. Over the last several months, the Obama administration has engaged in a thorough review of our approach with scientists, academics, NGOs, and government officials. We have determined that we have made considerable progress in recognizing and responding to a potential biological attack or outbreak of disease, although we can do more. More importantly, the Obama administration concluded that there is, was no comprehensive strategy to address gaps in our efforts to prevent the proliferation of biological weapons and scientific abuse. So just last week, President Obama approved a new national strategy for countering biological threats. Our new strategy has a clear overarching goal to protect against the misuse of science, to develop or use biological agents to cause harm. Copies of that strategy have been supplied to all of you. 
I would like to request that the strategy document be circulated as an official conference room document. Let me outline the broad goals of the strategy. First, we will work with the international community to promote the peaceful and beneficial uses of life sciences in accordance with the BWC's Article 10 to combat infectious disease regardless of their cause. We will work to promote global health security by increasing the availability of and access to knowledge and products of the life sciences to help reduce the impact from outbreaks of infectious disease, whether of natural, accidental, or deliberate origin. Second, we will work toward establishing and reinforcing norms against the misuse of the life sciences. We need to ensure a culture of responsibility, awareness, and vigilance among all who use and benefit from the life sciences to ensure that they are not diverted to harmful purpose. Third, we will implement a coordinated approach to influence, identify, inhibit, and interdict those who seek to misuse scientific progress to harm innocent people. We will seek to obtain timely and accurate information on the full spectrum of threats and challenges. This information will allow us to take appropriate action to manage the evolving risk. Finally, and perhaps most relevant to this body, we want to reinvigorate the Biological Weapons Convention as the premier forum for global outreach and coordination. The Biological Weapons Convention embodies the international community's determination to prevent the misuse of biological materials as weapons. But it takes the active efforts of its state's parties, individually and collectively, to uphold these commitments that continue to bolster the BWC as a key international norm. The United States wants to work to ensure that this is the principal forum dedicated to these issues. We appreciate and applaud this forum's past efforts and commit to engaging fully as we work together towards our common goals. Before describing our proposals to reinvigorate the BWC, let me reiterate that the Obama administration's commitment to the Biological Weapons Convention is steadfast. The United States will continue to meet its Article I commitments not to develop, acquire, produce, or possess biological weapons. <laughs>